Welcome to episode 64 of Enter the Mind podcast, the most real talk, no nonsense podcast on the empowering of the mind. Today's topic is going to be remembering who you are. Uh, two quick announcements, though. Number one, uh, this podcast is now listed on Amazon Music. So if you use that for your podcast, then you can find this there. And number two, make sure you listen to the end of today's episode so that you hear the power question of the day. It's a very powerful question that we always come up with on the spot based on whatever we talk about in the episode. That being said, uh, Kira, why don't you tell us how you're doing this week? I am doing well. Um, as you all know, I do not drink coffee. I do not sit well with caffeine, but I'm doing it anyways. I've got a cup of caffeinated coffee right here and I am buzzing already. I took like four sips. So uh, yeah, how's it going on your end? <laughs> nice. I am, I am very well caffeinated as well. So uh, that means today's episode is going to be on fire on fire. Um, so what made me think of uh, remembering who you are? Well, you know, I was going through the master class, the meditation course, and one of the lessons had the teacher reading this one poem, and I'll read it really quickly. It's just a short one. Um, but there's one line in this poem, one specific line that really kind of uh, hit me. And I'm wondering if the same line is going to hit you. I don't know. Uh, but here, I'll, I'll just go ahead and read it. Uh, so this is by Derek Walcott, and it's called Love After Love. So it goes, the time will come when with elation, you will greet yourself arriving at your own door in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who has loved you. All your life, whom you ignored for another, who knows you by heart, take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes, Peel your own image from the mirror. Sit, feast on your life. Any thoughts? I guess maybe the thing that grabbed me the most was um, loving the stranger that was once yourself. Me too. Um, <laughs> that was it. That, that was the line. That was the line. So That's what does that so make fun. you think of this concept of... Uh, let me see how it's phrased. Um, you will love again the stranger who was yourself. Yeah. Now, what did you come up with when you heard it? Well, it made me think of this idea of losing touch of ourselves as we go through, through life. I think maybe uh, when we're young, like five years old, we might be a little more in tuned with... Uh, with who we are at the core, maybe our heart and our mind are more aligned. And I think that with time, we get distracted from society and society's expectations. And we, and remember distraction, the root word, uh, Latin roots of the word distraction means to pull away from. So we get distracted, meaning we get pulled away from who we really are. And it's just, uh, very something stirs within me you know I'm working on listening to myself uh, a lot more there's listening to your mind there's listening to your body and there's listening to your soul and when i kind of listen to my soul and try to locate it in, in the space of reality what you know where is my soul am i am i together with it is it far away have i strayed away from it when i ask those sorts of questions i feel like i'm about to uncover something. I don't know about you, but that's, that's what it does for me. I think that's beautiful. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, when we came into this world, I feel like 
you know, obviously we were at our, our utmost purest. And, you know, as life came along, you know, we got swayed this way and that way. And we were told to believe this and that. And, you know, we kind of maybe became somebody that wasn't an actual representation of our true selves. And um, I think that, I think that remembering who you are is a, you always know who you are. Like you, you, you always know you're, you're always there personally. That's how, how I feel like no matter where my soul is, no matter if I'm not listening to my body at the moment, no matter if I'm, I'm not looking into my mind at the moment, I am always here. And I am a motherfucking warrior and I am a prophet. And that is who I am. That is who I know I am. And I feel like everybody has that silent, that silent energy that kind of tells them this is who you are. And it's almost like, it's almost like once you finally get to that point where it's like, oh, like this is who I am, you know, but once you finally get to that point, you kind of look back and you're like, holy shit, I was here all along. That was me that I was feeling all along. And I think that to me, that's what remembering who you are is about. But I really like the the thing about, uh, can you repeat it again, that line, the stranger line? Yeah, it says, you will love again the stranger who was yourself. You will love again the stranger who was once yourself. Yes. And I feel like remembering who you are, it's almost like, you know, there's like, because I guess what hit me there was not, we don't necessarily pay attention to ourselves, I guess, as much as we'd like to on a daily basis. But at the same time, I think that we are. And it's almost like that person is a stranger, yet it's somebody that you've known all along, which comes to the remembering who you are part. And that's what I have to say. What's on your mind? Well, I just want to point out, I wrote down the term silent energy that you said. I thought that was an awesome, totally awesome uh, term. And it's, yeah, I think I kind of get what you're saying there. Um, now, in regards to like remembering yourself, um, you know, so the way I interpret the poem is kind of like we've, we sometimes become strangers to our self. The more that we become somebody that we're not, the more we, the more that our true self becomes a stranger to us, right? So it's like loving again the stranger that was, it was us, yeah. Um, and I can't help but see so much convergence uh, among other, to other media and movies and whatever, uh, you know, in books. There's the book the top five regrets of the dying. And actually the number one regret that dying people have is that they wish they had lived a life true to themselves, not the life that other people wanted them to live. So that's one thing. And then also I was reminded of, uh, funny enough, that the movie, The Lion King, if you remember, um, Simba is the son of the the king, right? The What was his name? Uh, Mufasa? I think so, yeah. And so then, uh, but Scar, the uncle, like the evil uncle takes over. Simba runs away, you know, and Scar just like runs the whole community into the ground. And Simba has to get convinced of like, hey, this is your kingdom. Did you forget who you are? And there's a big scene where Rafiki that, you know, the wise monkey guy is like, do you remember who you are? You have to remember who you are. What's going on in your mind? I just think that that's absolutely amazing. I think that that's, that that's a wonderful, um, what's it called? Metaphor, I think. A wonderful metaphor for, um, you know, remembering who you are. And I think that it's really good to have those internal conversations with yourself now that you presented the metaphor. Um, for our listeners, I think it'd be beneficial for you. If, you know, you, you sat and you had a conversation with your kind of the scar inside of you and then the Simba inside of you. And like, you know, to just kind of talk to yourself and be like, 
you know, like this is, this is my, this is my kingdom. This is my fucking kingdom, you know? And then Scar's over there and he's like, bitch, this ain't your kingdom. This shit is mine. And you're like, yo, this shit is mine. <laughs> you know? So it's, it's like, it's cool to listen to both sides of the voices in your mind because you can really see the positivity of yourself, the genuine positivity, like the genuine answers that come out with, like from within you. And then you can also see the darkest parts of yourself. And when you're genuinely having that conversation with yourself, those darkest parts will genuinely come up. And most of the time, since you're in such a good headspace about having this double conversation with the voices in your head, um, you, you take in those that the, the things that Scar says and you're kind of like, knew I'd find it, like knew I'd find what was holding me back. And you know, that's your, that's your genuine king talking inside of your head. And that's, that's you remembering who you are and saying like, like, yes, like I, I knew that I would find this. Um, so I hope that that made sense. Yeah, I think it's very insightful that you point out that we can have a scar uh, inside of ourselves uh, like the uh, you can have an evil you know kind of persona that you play at times and then you can have a the more you know the true king uh, version of you and I think it's important because it speaks to the pliability of the human personality and the human psyche and I mm -hmm. it's mentioned already way too much but of course we all know of the famous Stanford prison experiment um, that was done uh, many decades ago where the researchers had college students dress up either as prisoners or prison guards. And because they were handed a role and they started to play the role, the experiment got out of control because they went way too far um, with the prison guards disciplining the prisoners. And what that shows is that you can just hand a roll to somebody and they will grab it and run with it, completely abandoning their true self, whatever that might be. Now, the danger is that um, when a human being enters society, um, there are a million people uh, handing them a roll. You know, this is what I want you to do. This is what, right? And... It, it even it takes the form of a job title at, at your employment where you get, you're getting paid money, but people take on these roles and these titles and it's just tugging and pulling them like this away from their true self. And what happens is at the end of their life, they look back and they finally, uh, their soul wakes up uh, finally after years of slumber. And they're like, wait a second, like, what was this life that I just lived? This was... I wasn't even myself. I was just playing the role that other people uh, wanted me to play. That hit deep. That <laughs> hit deep, Robert. Um, that was amazing. You were on fire today. Um, I, I love this concept so fucking much because... You know how I, I love the devil. I, I love studying the devil and I love studying evil. And I, because I just feel like people have it so fucking misconstrued. So what you said about like, people are just like handing you roles. It reminded me of when I was 18 years old and I left home and somebody handed me the role of party girl, um, cokehead, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, I'll take it. <laughs> Shit, I ain't got nothing else to have. I'll take it you know, so I took the role, you know, and through all that time, you know, as I sat in that very dark state of mind, um, I, uh, I came to the conclusion that people are always taking things for free. They're like, oh, it's free. I'll take it. You know, like, yeah, I'll take this. It's free. You're just handing me this to me. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Please feed my child right you know and and here the devil is you know sneaking up on your back and he's like here 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 it is it's, it's right 
I laid it all out for you. Here is your mundane job. Here are these friends that are going to turn you into somebody else. Here, I'll even give you a brand new mindset that you can adapt to incredibly easy. And this person is like, yes, I will take this because they don't know any better. And when you're, when you're handed something for free, you know, you get all excited and you're like, yes, I'll take this. But in reality, free isn't always the best, man. It's, and number one, free ain't always the best. Number two, it's not always free because the devil may have laid this beautiful thing out to you, may have handed you this, this role that just seems so easy and fitting that you slip right into it. And the next thing you know, you're paying with your fucking soul. You know, and that's how you, you know, become somebody that you're not. And when you start to remember who you are, that's when God starts trying to pull you back into you, into who you are. And he will, he will always try. God is, God is always there for you. You know, whether you see it as the universe, whether you see it as reality, it's always there for you always it will never ever ever abandon you and the more that you tap into that that savior somebody coming to save your soul the more the 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 harder the devil tries to keep you where you are and he's going to try so hard he's going to put all of these thoughts in your mind that say my soul is already too far gone oh this is kind of a nice life i don't really know if i want to try for more and he's going to keep putting those thoughts in your head and next thing you know you're going to wake up like robert said and you're going to be like, where the fuck did my life go? And it was all because you didn't listen to the savior who was trying to save you and reclaim your soul to you. So yeah, love that. Love it. How, how funny that the same themes resurface in our episodes, <laughs> because wasn't it episode seven, uh, devil is an energy that we talked about, like God and devil. And, and maybe you introduced that a lot. So maybe it's kind of your, your, your own philosophy, the, the, Kira, yeah, soul design, <laughs> soul design, future <laughs> philosophy, but, um, but no, it's definitely. I see a lot of things tying together. I think it actually ties together with, with what I've said um, about God being reality. This idea that God is reality, and then when when we get pulled away from reality, that's what we need to watch out for. And if we do have this thing uh, called a true self. And if when society hands us roles that pulls us away from our true self, then we're being pulled away from the reality of who we are. So it's a pull away from reality. And what I've been trying to emphasize in all these episodes is that every time we stray away from reality, that's when we get into trouble. That's what we want to avoid. What are you thinking? Is it your... Um, I always forget what it's called, but with the hooks kind of pulling you pendulum. Yes. Right. Yes. I was going to say it it relates to that. Right. The term from, yeah. Reality transurfing pendulum, the pendulum could, yeah, yeah, yeah. It can, uh, pendulum is like, uh, takes your energy. It hooks onto you and, you know, steals, hijacks your energy. And so if you're involved in some sort of, well, that's a perfect example. The Stanford prison experiment, you could think of that whole scenario as like the pendulum, like that energy where it's like, they're all playing these roles and they're getting so into it. And so they're at the energetic level, there's this really strong force going on that if you allow it to hook you, and if you allow that role to hook onto you, it's going to um, hijack you. Go ahead. I got another thing. Okay, so um, another philosophy of mine is you are confident. You are a confident human being, doesn't matter what, you're confident and and you're just confident in things that aren't benefiting you, right? So if you can so easily be hooked on to something and let your pendulum swing, you know, and steal your energy so easily to things that you do not want, then don't you think that you would be able to reverse the effect and learn how to get your energy hooked on to things that are benefiting you? Because listen, if you can do it one way, you can learn to do it another. That's a good point. So you're raising the question of could could a pendulum be a force for good? But I don't know. We might have to call it something else than a pendulum then. 
if if it's for good i don't know or maybe we can keep the same term and then distinguish between negative pendulums and positive pendulums yes yes that is that is what i think that we can do here can build off of that very yeah very possible um another uh, one point i want to make with this um energy concept right of your energy being stolen right so i think that the stanford prison experiment is a great example of when people's energy gets stolen or kind of hijacked or almost like a parasite kind of takes advantage of its host right um like a virus kind of infects you or something and turns you into like a zombie or whatever so that's a relationship where somebody has given up sort of occupancy of their resource and one concept i've been thinking about really is the more i study real estate and let's talk about the the real economics of the world right so the world the planet earth is basically a planet of resources and then these humans are kind of competing and sharing these resources competing for and sharing them with each other right and one way in which they exchange uh, these resources is through renting something out. So a person owns a house like Grant Cardone owns these apartment buildings and rents out the apartments, right? It's this exchange, right? So he has a building, he's renting it out. Now, what's interesting is that every one of us, even if you don't have a billion dollars in real estate like Grant Cardone, you do have two resources, your mind and your body. Now, when people rent out their body, we call that prostitution right and some places it's illegal and everything but it's also frowned upon in many in many circles and i thought about this and i thought why is that frowned upon so much when really if i'm sitting at my job if i'm employed by somebody working a nine to five office job i'm actually renting out this brain to the company for eight hours a day in exchange for a salary. They pay me rent, but in return for that money, they get to use this however they want for their own goals. Finish this project, finish that project. And so how am I any better than the prostitute if I'm renting this out you know, every single day to somebody else's mission, somebody else's goals? Um, it's this deeper, this deeper truth of like, what resource are you renting out? And so when people in society hand us these roles and we accept them, it's, it's like we're renting out this one resource we have of, of, of our mind and our soul of being like a, a, who we really are. We're like renting it out and saying here, yes, I will play that role. And then the exchange sometimes is not money. Sometimes the exchange is just like temporary self-esteem. Um, temporary feelings of belongingness or something. Um, I don't know. What are your thoughts? It reminds me of what we were talking about in maybe three weeks ago, our episode, um, the one about like you're getting paid either way. Um, and it completely, it's, yeah, it's so true. You know, like we are always in exchange, like always in exchange. That's why, you know, when people come up and they, they try and hand you this role or they try and hand you this thing, you really need to find yourself worthy enough to say, you know, this is my sacred home. This is my body. This is my mind. This is my blood. This is my experience. This is my perception. This is my life. And when, you, uh, when you're handed something and, you know, you're kind of just taking in anything that you can get you know it's such a a disrespect to your body because you're not taking into play what the payment is okay uh sure i will um i will let this person talk to me like this uh because i'm really not that important and um you know that's that's just how it's going to be so then you're paying with your worth you're saying, I really don't need this worth. I, I'm really not that worth it. Here, take my worth. Um, and you can just say whatever you want to me because I'm pretty much a dump bag for you to just, you know, dump on. And it's such a harsh, harsh um, 
example, but it's, it's very true. You know, it's not like I haven't been through it, you know, like I've, I've used myself as a dump bag and, and thought that I wasn't worth it before, you know? So it's, it's not a, it's not a lovely place to be at all. And, you know, nobody wants to be there. So I guess, you know, in order to like, remember who you are, just like, start remembering your worth like start remembering like this is your body your vessel your home your experience and you know what it's fucking important bro like it's it's fucking it's really important and you really need to start taking more into account of what you want in your life of what you want to experience in your life you know somebody may come up and say hey here's um here's a million fucking dollars. You get it right now. But in return, I'm going to take your soul and I'm going to take everything that you love around you. Sound good? And you, you're like a million bucks. Yeah. You know, next thing you know, two years later, you're, you're fucking alone and you're unhappy because you made a deal with the goddamn devil that you weren't aware of. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you emphasized the, the coming back to your worth and viewing, seeing your worth. Cause I think that's huge. And it almost to me was making me think of uh, some sort of universal like human rights philosophy of like everybody has a right to their body, their mind, et cetera. And um, I don't know, that's sort of an offshoot uh, tangent, but um, let's do final thoughts and power questions since uh, it's that time. So um so many possible power questions uh, from today's episode. I think one of them would be what resources are being exchanged right now? So that's a question you could ask at any moment in the day. What resources are being exchanged right now? And, um, and then I have two sentences that I wrote down that I just kind of insights from listening to what you had to say and putting it together with my thoughts. And one of them is... Uh, we are all desperate actors. Uh, and that was inspired when you were talking about when you were 18 and you just so readily took on that role, the party girl role that people gave you, right? It's like, we are, like we are all desperate actors. Um, and then a second one is we are the landlords of our mind. And sometimes we don't think of ourselves as a landlord. We don't identify ourselves as a landlord, right? If we're not, if we don't own businesses or own properties, we don't think of ourselves as like, oh, I own something, but you do own something. You own this. And so those are kind of two closing thoughts that were on the top of my mind. Um, so I'll pass it to you to close this out. I really, really, really like both of those. Um, I really like the landlord of my mind because I kind of just thought of myself as like a piece of like real estate. And I'm like, all right, well, if I'm the landlord, you know, I'm looking for business, baby. I'm looking for what's going to get me to where I want to go. So I really, really like that. That's, that's definitely a cool new perspective. Um, and I guess the power question of the day um, that I could, you know, add as well would be, um, you know, truly, what am I worth? Truly, truly, what do I think I am worth? Um, and I want you to, to create a very safe space for yourself um, when you ask yourself this question, because it can, it can bring up a lot of times in the past where you have really just undermined your worth. And in order for you to be okay in a, in a safe space and actually learn and, and move forward from this, you're really going to need to just not have any judgment on yourself and, um, you know, detach from yourself and just say, you know, really, what, what am I worth? What, what do I think I'm worth? And, um, that's, that's a deep fucking question right there. So <laughs> totally. We've got some, two very good questions to ponder throughout the day and the week. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. So awesome. I think we did it for episode 64. We'll be back next week with episode 65. If this content was helpful to you, then please show your love by hitting the like button and sharing with your family and friends. All right. Have a safe week and think deeply. We'll see you next Wednesday on episode 65. We love you.